Hi, my name is David Melling and I'm in my studio where I write and illustrate children's books. I started illustrating in the mid-80s actually and I used to illustrate for magazines and advertising agencies um, but after a few years I got some work in an animation studio in London which proved to be a really um, influential and exciting way of developing my work. Um, I used to uh, render animation cells and I used to illustrate the backgrounds of commercials and a few uh, small TV films as well. And um, for me, it was a really interesting way to see how storylines develop and the sequential use of drawings to show how a story works. Um, I was very lucky a few years later for the tale of, the tale of Jack Frost was made into a, an animated film, which was fantastic. It was great to see some of the characters come to life, um, particularly a bunch of goblins which were in the, which were in the book. And um, what I thought I might do now is to draw one of the goblins uh, and see what you think. So, first of all, I just get the uh, shape going. Uh, cartridge paper first, um, quite loosely and quite light just to get the positioning right of this character. Um, because when I use watercolour paper, I don't like to um, rub out too much on the paper because it affects the paint later and you get these marks. So with watercolor, uh, with uh, cartridge paper, you're not worried about making mistakes. You just be, you can be nice and scribbly. The idea now is just to make this quite rough, just to get the positioning, and then I'll use a light box and trace it onto a watercolor paper in a minute. You know, drawing is a bit like um, handwriting. A lot of illustrators say that, and it's true. You know, you find your own way of of drawing. Um, it takes a while, but it's like writing, you know, you, you learn how to write, but then after a while you find your, your way of forming letters. It's the same thing with drawing. I usually start off with a pencil, as I'm doing now, and um, a sketchbook just to get loose, uh, quick ideas, and then I uh, use watercolour and colour pencils, a little bit of colour pencil to put in small details at the end. Yeah, a few spots. So that's really enough now for me to um, take it to the next stage, which is to trace it onto uh, watercolour paper. I'll take it over to a light box here, then I'll uh, take some of the watercolour paper that I like to use, and I can position it where I like, and then I can just see enough to get through and then I just start tracing it out. But again, now I know I don't need to make too many mistakes because I've got the essence of what, uh, what I want to draw. Okay, so now that's traced, um, I will now ink in the drawing. I do like making up characters. I'm very fond of goblins. <laughs> I've, I've sort of been doing a series of goblin books recently, with, which have been great fun to do. And um, I mean, the first book I ever did was The Kiss That Missed, and that really came about because I thought, well, what would I like to draw? And I thought it'd be really good fun to draw a knight and a horse going on an adventure in the woods. And, and that's it. You just start really from what interests you, what you enjoy. And uh, but I like making up characters as well. And um, Jack Frost was a good book to work on for me. It was quite enjoyable for that reason. You can make up lots of silly characters and uh, just have fun that way, yeah. I've just finished a book actually about um, a sorry looking bear who's called Douglas and he's looking for a hug and he can't get one at the moment. So he's running around and he's called, it's, uh, the book's called Hugless Douglas and he meets some. Um, Lots of characters on the way looking around trying to get 
someone to give him a hug. The difficulty is, and many, many illustrators will agree with this, that you're always trying to get this sort of spontaneous look that you achieve in the sketch. For, for most people, I think they'd agree that the sketch is always the most interesting looking drawing. Um, probably because there's lots of scribbly lines which give it lots of movement. Um, and although you do lose that spontaneity when you do these type of, well, for me, <laughs> when I'm doing this inking, hopefully it gains something else as well. But it's a bit, you're always looking for that sort of fresh, spontaneous look. There we are, that's ready to paint now. So, um, the paints I use are a combination of uh, watercolour um, and these um, inks, which um, they last years, literally, I mean, you'll see how much I use. A little blob here. Okay, now what I'll do is um, clear off any pencil work, making sure the ink's dry first, of course. And um, start mixing up. Now what I tend to do, is um, wet the paper for wet the area first I want to use. I think they call it wet in wet, I think. And you can see the, the, the colour bleeds onto the area rather than stays where it is, which is quite nice. You just move the paint around really. I haven't wet these ones because you don't have to wet every area. Obviously the larger the, well for me, the larger the area needs to be painted, the more important it is to keep it wet. But And then what I have to do, before I paint the other areas, I've got to make sure this is dry, otherwise these colours will bleed in. What I'm going to do now is what all my neighbours wonder what I do all day with a hairdryer. It's always best to uh, work light and always get darker if you want to. If I need to, I'll just go back with the pen and just finish off by just strengthening some of the lines. But I won't do all of them, just a few. Okay, well that's it. That's um, that's just a quick quick sketch, really, of um, I don't know a carrot eating goblin. <laughs>